secret ain't a secret anymore We know what you're doing in your dirty little war It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before Your little secret ain't a secret anymore Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore Welcome to the 200th week of Julian Assange Sydney Town Hall gatherings. We happen to have one of the world's greatest journalists, one of my favourite heroes of all time, Mr. Joe Laurier, who is uh, like John Pertur and several other journalists, the greatest journalist about on this planet, he said he'll come and say a couple of words. Please, Joe, just give us a couple of words, please. First, I have to, I have to uh, pay tribute to the people here who have been doing this for 200 weeks. That's, my, my arithmetic is bad, but that's about four years. Correct. What's happened those four years? A lot. Besides Julian being in jail, which is how this started, right? But the awareness of the case around the world has been extraordinarily different from four years ago. It, heads of state all across Latin America, uh, members of this parliament, of parliaments in Germany, Britain, one or two members of the US Congress. And it's because of people like uh, you who are here today, because in many cities of the world there are rallies like this, trying to explain to a population that's walking by, getting to and from work, who you're, in this case, who your own citizen is, what he's done and, and what has been done to him. And what has he done? What has he done? Well, I am a journalist. I do not uh, ascribe to the description that was given of me of being one of the world's greatest or being mentioned the same breath as John Pilger. Just go to Pilger's website and see how many films and uh, books he's written. There's very few of us who can come close to the, his achievements. But he was a journalist, and he still is. He's in jail for being that and nothing more. Publisher. It's often said here by um, politicians, um, amongst them the, the six that are in Washington right now, lobbying to get Julian out, that Chelsea Manning is free, and Chelsea was the source. How could the journalist, the publisher, still be in jail, what's often forgotten is that Chelsea Manning signed a non-disclosure agreement with the U.S. government. She was an employee of the U.S. government. She actually broke a law. So, no way she should have been treated the way she was. Imprisoned for that long and tortured, but she broke a law. She decided on her own to break that law. Now, I'm the editor of Consortium News and the editor-in-chief, uh, our founding editor, Robert Perry. He wrote in 2010 that he, and he was a great investigative journalist for Associated Press, that he would encourage his sources if they needed to, to break a law in order to reveal information that could prevent a larger crime from being committed. That's what a whistleblower does. That's what Chelsea Manning did. So she went into that with her eyes wide open, that she was committing a crime to give that material to Julian Assange. And yet she's free. Julian Assange was never a U.S. citizen, never worked for the U.S. government, never signed a non-disclosure agreement. What is he doing in jail in Britain? Because he upset very powerful people in Britain, in the United States, and even here in Australia, if you remember what Julia Gillard said about him, that he'd committed a crime. What I just said she was saying wasn't true. That he'd committed a crime and wanted his passport, and only the AFP had to tell her that she was full of it. He'd committed no crime. So if Chelsea Manning is free, someone who did commit a crime willingly, there's no reason Julian should be in jail 
except they want to protect their own bottoms here, their own interests. And this should outrage everyone on this street right now. If they understood what the case is, and again, thank you to everyone here for your two years of bringing that information to your public here in a very busy street in Sydney. So keep it up, and thank you very much. Bye-bye. Joe Lario, folks, the uh, editor-in-chief of Consortium News, possibly the leading publication on geopolitics in the world right now. If you don't know about Consortium News, you really are not being informed. You must uh, check them out. Joe Lario, thank you so much, sir. Any day now, any day now, I shall be and Julian shall be released. We are now very privileged to have another great journalist who's also connected with that great publication Consortium News. If you don't tune into Consortium News every day or two you are really missing out on geopolitics and humanitarian issues because Nearly all the other organizations, or a lot of the other organizations that are controlled by money, are corrupt. But Consortium News is really one of the most trustworthy media outlets. Kathy Logan, journalist and one of the uh, editors of Consortium News, is going to have a few words. Please make her welcome. Thank you, Kathy. Well, on this 200th protest, my celebration of a great person's work. Um, I'm proud to be here with you. I recognize so many faces here. We have been here. We have occupied DFAT. Where is she? Naughty girl. We got Max Kaiser to put that on his channel and we got 28,000 views. We occupied DFAT in 2012. Jan, my friend from Politics in the Pub. We have Jan might have been there on the day as well. Maybe no, no. <laughs> no. I think that we, everybody was so brave. But I'm uh, Mark Wahlberg, you have been coming to, we've all been going to protest. I started defending Julian Assange in 2010. It's been 13 years. He had a website called thingtothing.com. I was told he worked with Chinese dissidents because WikiLeaks in the very early days the idea was to go after repressive regimes China, Russia, Middle Eastern countries Western countries were not on the list that wasn't the original intention of WikiLeaks you can read that on the Cryptome.org website today the original emails of all the people who put this beautiful idea together to create transparency, to let people know about war crimes, corruption, the things that we really ought to know. And what I thought about WikiLeaks was that you've got to have accuracy in the historical record even. As a historian, it, it must be accurate. But also I understood that Julian Assange had a distinctly anti-war bent about him. And he said our number one enemy is ignorance. And in fact, most of the wars in the last 50 years have been started by media lies. And if we can do something about that, if we have a healthier media environment, we will have a safer world. Now, the Arab Spring came after that. This changed the world. People started understanding why their lives were miserable. We found out that these armies that were so powerful were just gunning down civilians for fun, for sport, like as if it was a video game. And I'm talking about collateral murder. I took that website and I started writing. I was a teacher, I didn't write, but I thought, and I was a filmmaker, I thought, I can do something. I'll take that website and I maintained it for 
nine years. I don't post on it very much these days because over that period of being what we called then popularly a citizen journalist, I started going on to these vigils and reporting on Julian Assange issues. And that those vigils, you remember they went up, they went up to 50 hours, they'd had 50 guests. Well, I was one of them. And guess who I met on the vigil? I met John Loria. He, he was interviewing me, then I had to interview the next person. And well, it, what happened is that I turned into a journalist myself and I became a full-time journalist. And what I've been doing since 2019 is I've been in the courtroom, in the Assange courtroom, every day. Joe Laurie and I, Mary Costakidis, you all know Mary Costakidis, we have been in the Assange courtroom since the case management hearings, before the extradition hearings. We were in there all day, every day for one month in September 2020. We were in there in February 2020. And we were lucky to escape before the pandemic hit. We got back to Australia just one day before the borders closed. I would have got back as I'm an Aussie, but I brought Laurie back with me to keep him safe. I thought it'd be safer in Australia. Bravo. Now what I have heard, what we have heard in the courtroom is a completely different story. We are hearing forensics. We are hearing a litany of witnesses that show exactly what Jennifer Robinson said in the Canberra press conference, that the facts of the case show that no crime has been committed. Now, there are politicians that want Julian to take a plea deal, admit you're guilty to something, just like poor old David Hicks had to do, yeah. right? They, uh, hats off to Stephen Kenny for getting that all overturned. He came back to Australia a criminal. He hadn't committed any crime either, but that was the, that was the deal, or John Howard, our prime minister at the time, wouldn't bring him back to to Australia. So he had to sign all of these documents. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he said it was so hard to say that he had done things that he had not done. But Stephen Kenny wiped his slate clean. He became an innocent man again, a victim, another victim of the American military uh, machine. Thank you. That was a good, exactly the right word. That's the way it operates. He was whisked off to Guantanamo Bay for five years. Look at poor Julian, he's been incarcerated in one form or another since 2011. It's just terrible. But the worst thing about it is the lies that are still going around. Now in my work with Consortium News, we are also reporting, I'm a, I make the videos, some producer, video producer, but we've been in touch with the Australian parliamentarians who are in Washington at the moment. And this morning, David Shoebridge, Senator David Shoebridge, one of our favorites, our very own from New South Wales, he connected with us and he gave us a report of how the Australian politicians are going in Washington. They've been to Congress, they've been to the Department of State, They've been to the Department of Justice and they've been at the Australian Embassy. And he tells me that they were treated with respect, they were given a fair hearing, and it seems that there are a lot of American politicians who are on board. One of the things that pleased me the most is that David said, and what we are doing is we are correcting the false information. They think they are saying, even Anthony Blinken, when he came here, he said Liar. that Julian had caused a lot of harm, right? Liar. We know from General Robert Carr, from Chelsea Manning's court martial, that not one single person had been harmed. He tried to bluff, he gave a name, but that person wasn't even in 
the release in the revelations. His name wasn't there. So he had to admit not one person had been harmed. And so there, he said there are a lot of people who know all that already, but they are aware of the fundamentals in this case. Their First Amendment is really important to them. And there are lots of reasons now why the First Amendment is in, not only in debate, but you could say in crisis. There's a, a wave of censorship going on, and I don't need to go into too much detail that, but that is impeding free speech. They're trying to nip the publications that came after WikiLeaks that tell the truth, bravely tell the truth. They're trying to nip them in the bud. Uh, consortium News has come under some attack, but we've kept going since 2010. Consortium News has published over 700 articles about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. And since I started, we have published around 350 films, video reports as well. So we got a little award, that little Julian Assange award like a week ago. Uh, but it was, it was for that, it was for steadfastly reporting, honestly, truthfully, on the Assange case. That's what it was for. Next year that award will be for something else. That was the international one. But anyway, I've spoken too much. I think that today we're not just here because for the 200th time, it must be the thousandth time for a lot of the people that I see here. We are the long haulers and we're not going to give up. We will not shut up either and our parliamentarians now, who are all in agreement, we have a united parliament, they're not going to shut up either. And we want the charges dropped. That's it. We want them dropped. You've had enough. You've ruined his life. It's over. Let him come home and be a dad and be a husband. Kathy Vargan! Kathy Vargan, folks, please Woo! give it up for Kathy Vargan. Truth tells a compelling story. The truth about Julian Assange places him in a very positive light. Here is some truth about Julian Assange. He is a political prisoner being held hostage. All available evidence shows us that everything he did was both ethical and legal. Julian is a journalist and a publisher. Julian showed the world how governments could be made transparent by protecting whistleblowers through his innovative use of digital encryption. Everything Julian has published is genuine and firmly in the public interest. Julian Assange is brave. His journalism exposed war crimes and high level corruption. Julian personally redacted names to protect innocent people and no one i repeat no one has been harmed as a result of his publishing in 2011 julian and wikileaks were awarded a gold walkley award for their outstanding contribution to journalism. Australia's highest journalistic award. Julian's journalism has revealed crimes the powerful desperately want to keep hidden from public scrutiny. His journalism has been invaluable for justice and has been used as decisive evidence in courts of law all around the world. Now listen, uh, a little placard I picked up here which I thought was attractive 
truth results in peace. And you know, one of the best forms of truth is a photograph. And I think we should all stand together and get a photograph, which hopefully Julian can see, and maybe will be published on the Consortium News, and every foreign minister, every state department, every diplomat in the entire world will see that we're not going to forget about this matter. Please come in so we can get a photograph of us all. So everyone, make sure you can see the camera. Free, free. Julian Assange. Free, free. Julian Assange. Free, free. Julian Assange. Eighty-eight percent of you out there think he should not be extradited. How about you join him? Come on, you twelve percent. <laughs> Don't shilly shally around. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. We know what you're doing in your dirty little war. It's the same thing you've been doing time and time and time before. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. shoot the messenger. Well, Julian Assange is a messenger. He's not a traitor. He held up a mirror to the people of the USA to show them what is really going down. And your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. We know what you're doing in your dirty little war. It's the same thing you for your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. Your dirty little secret ain't a secret anymore. We'd like to welcome our guest of honor, Kathy Vaughan. Who's going to cut Joe. the cake? It's our Joe. fourth, virtually our fourth birthday here. Every Friday, standing okay. up for justice for Assange. Okay. Let's share this moment and okay. this cake. It's celebration time. We're celebrating the work we've done. Sending our cheerio to Julian. 200 weeks we've been here. And we're ready for the next 200. In the meantime, we're going to have cake. Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whee! I cut out. Okay. I cut out the word "free." Yes. The, the word "free" has been cut loose. Yay! That's very symbolic. If anybody would like to come. Anyone want a piece of freedom? Come and have a piece of freedom. Come this way. Come and join us. Come and join us for some cake. Come and join our celebration. I don't want to cut this word. We're celebrating you guys waking up. We're celebrating your enlightenment. We're celebrating in 200 weeks how you've come out of the darkness and you're into the light and you've forced the politicians we are seeing democracy in action. The will of the people is being expressed by those of you on the street. The fact that 90% of you are behind Julian is what is going to release Julian. You've done it, guys. You've demonstrated the power of democracy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody out there.